I had an interesting thought, and then I was reading an article in Science News, and it was sort of confirmed by a study that's been done that was proposed by the scientists. And what it was is <clears throat> about this question about the arrow of time, because the weird thing is, of course, we see this arrow of time as very steady, or seem so, and um, and yet, you know, physics uh, talks in terms of time should be reversible, especially Newtonian physics, right, where there is a particular um, uh, future connected to a particular past. It doesn't matter how you run forward or backwards. So in uh, New Newtonian physics, they often analyze things in terms of their reversibility, and at least mathematically, they should be reversible, and it's left open. The strange question of why don't they actually reverse? Well, what it has always occurred to me a long time ago, I don't remember when I first thought of this, but what if time didn't go forward? Because it's like, if, if time is a dimension that you could freely move in, perhaps we're just drifting, like anything, drifting along. And so we move in a forward time machine at a particular speed because we don't have freedom of, of motion, potentially. But what if something was blowing us back and forth so that any given moment, maybe the motion was brownian, we'd move this way for a while, then we'd move back in time, and we'd go back and forth. Well, when you went back in time, the chemistry in your mind runs backwards. So the chemistry that normally forms memory forgets them. And by the time the, the reversal starts, there you are back in time, you know, from the future. In some sense, your immediate past was in the future. But you don't know it because at that moment that you start moving forward again, your previous uh, experience was of the current moment up to, up to that moment and so you continue forward seamlessly you wouldn't know that you've gone back in time at every point your experience would be such that uh, you had an experience as if your past was just in this what we call the past in reality you could have been in the future and unwound the past you built up into the future to get back to this point and we wouldn't know it because it's as if it was all there, leading directly up to you with no detours. Okay, it's a similar to the idea that God could create the world 13 seconds ago all in place, including your memories, and you wouldn't know any different. Okay, that's the beginner's version. Okay, now, the advanced version takes quantum mechanics into account, and I was just realizing this. So, with quantum mechanics, you could um, go up into the future, and then if time were to be just jostling around like this, you'd go back in the future, and because things are random, you could do the same thing and it could come out different. So, for example, you could have just rolled a seven and won at craps, $100,000. Meaning you bet 50, so I don't know. You must have a lot of money already. You probably don't need it. But, um, and then you roll back, and when you roll it again, everything the same. It's only rolled back a little bit. You could roll it again and it could come up different. Okay, but what I just realized, too, is it's the same way in the reverse direction. Okay, you just rolled seven and one. Well, when you go back in time quantum-wise, you could go back to any universe that you roll seven. You know what I'm saying? Let's say you one universe, you roll seven. In another one, you roll seven, but it's the other dice. The dice that was a three was, is a four now, and the dice that was a four is a three now. So it's different. But the end result is, is you won the money. The biggest influence on your life is going to be winning or losing the money, not which of the two die actually came up, the three or the four. Okay. So you could conceivably go back in time, and you could go to either of those universes, right? Because time's reversible in physics, and so it's just as uncertain when you're going back in time there's a limited number of probabilities that could have led to that. So every moment is actually, not only is every moment a divergence of universes, it's also a convergence of universes that could possibly lead to it. So both universes with the sevens lead to the universe where you win the winnings at the crap table. So if you were to jostle back in time, you might go back in time. But maybe in back in time there's other differences besides the way the dice were. Perhaps you drunk a little more and you were holding your hands a little different and you picked up the dice at a different time. Okay. Now you would never have experienced these originally, but in the process of going forward and backward in time, just like the chemical processes would erase your memories going backward in time, so these side traveling processes would basically Photoshop your mind 
such that you would believe that you had just experienced that moment leading after all of those previous moments. But just like the future, that past could be potential. Perhaps you've never actually been to that past, it's just as if you had been. You might come into an experience from the side and your mind gets, uh, has the physical changes that happen in your mind in the sideways motion, cause it to rewrite its experiences, and not just its experiences, but all of the physical facts, it really is its history, and so our history is nothing more than a potential. It's nothing more than a statement that right now it's as if this was my past, and that past can change just like the future could change. So if you were to go back in time to the World War II era, and somebody else has gone back in time even earlier and killed Hitler, when you go back in time and unravel to the World War II era, one, you'll be an ancestor of yourself, not yourself, and two, Himmler might be president, or dictator rather, of, of Germany. So anyway, I thought that was sort of interesting. The implications are bounded as well as boundless.